Guys, what is up? Thank you so much for watching. Brandon with Strict Vision Athletics here with Rebecca Rhodes from the Gilbert Lifestyle. How you doing? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. So you were just saying uh, it's actually going to be rebranded. Gilbert Lifestyle is now going to be called uh, what exactly? City Lifestyle Gilbert. Oh, how yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. So why the good. why the change? Any? It's um, the Lifestyle Publications are a nationwide publication. There's one different cities all over the country and they have a parent company that is that oversees the look and branding of the publications okay and they are redesigning everything there's it's gonna have a whole new look and a new title very cool. but it'll still be the same lifestyle the lifestyle publication that you know and love and yeah we'll keep all the information about everything that's going on in Gilbert and let people know who's here and what's what's happening we did a little bit of research in preparation for this, and, and I, I just wanted to kind of get a feel. How, how long has the publication been around? How, how big is the, how, I mean, how big are the audience read magazines? Like, like how is that? <laughs> you know, I'm not sure what the readership is. Uh, the Gilbert publication has been around for a few years now. Okay. So it is, you know, well known. Yeah. Yeah, everybody we've told people a shocking number of people yeah. know who who you guys are. I, 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 it's a good thing. Again, maybe I just don't read magazines, but I, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, oh, cool, it's a it's a magazine. But um, yeah, I just I, we wanted to bring you on. I'm gonna let you kind of the the floor is yours. The format of this conversation is entirely up to you. You can kind of just do the interview how you would have uh, would have done it if we weren't even on a podcast. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Well, our January issue is the health and wellness issue. Okay. And one of the things that we wanted to cover was, you know, creating a home gym. Okay. And I was told that you have the ultimate home gym, and looking around, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we have we have fun. It's been, it's it's been a pretty cool process seeing it uh, seeing it build and seeing it unfold. <laughs> Well, why don't you kind of start and tell tell me and, and tell all your viewers, you know, a little bit about yourself and, sure. you know, how you got into the fitness world and into training and how you ended up building this home gym. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I started, seriously started training probably right around when I was 17. I had a, uh, I had the unique opportunity to have an internship with the NFL. I trained with a group called Performance Enhancement Professionals up in North Scottsdale. And I, I ended up interning and training with them for about four years. So as I began college, I had that experience to kind of back it up. And when I had summer term, I would come back here and I would always do that. And that really laid a foundation for me, very unique to training from a professional aspect, because most of the time when people get into this, they don't they don't really jump ahead to that step to that stage. They hope to sort of get to that stage one day. And I, because I never trained commercial, I never like worked at an LA Fitness or an EOS or did uh, classes or anything like that. And in, in fact, at the time, I didn't even have certifications. I, we had a family friend that was training at the facility, and he had a way with the the owner. The guy's name's Ian Danny, and he kind of brought me in and was like, "Hey, you know." He, he wants to learn this. He he's passionate about fitness. Can he come in and intern? And so that's that's how I got my informal start uh, back back when I was 17, 18 years old. Um, during college, I, I studied kinesiology. I got out. I got my BA. And from there, I took a little bit of a uh, gap where I actually did some real estate for a little bit of time. But I always still I was always still a student of this. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was building this. So we've been here now for about um, eight years almost. Oh, wow. It's almost eight years. Can you believe that? Almost eight years here. And in that time, it's really been kind of a passion project that just kept going. That's how it started. It, this uh, garage gyms were not nearly as mainstream as they are now. There were, of course, people who always had them. But now, and especially with the push of COVID, the garage gym community has erupted. It's huge. And especially with the, uh, you know, the combination of COVID and now social media just getting larger at the, at the same time. This has become, there are Facebook groups, there are Instagram uh, influencers, there are people that all they do is build and sell and just influence other garage gym owners. And that really wasn't, um, t to me, I didn't really see it that as our path. I always saw myself, I wanted to be a trainer. Because that's what I did with the NFL. I actually, I, you know, I worked with real athletes. It wasn't my gym. It wasn't a garage gym. So being a garage gym influencer was not how I saw myself. 
And that's really where Eli kind of came in when I, when I, when we partnered up, when he graduated from TCU, we had a meeting of the minds, if you will. And he kind of came in and said, you know, you're doing something here. I don't think you really see the direction that you should go. I think you're going, you see yourself as a trainer and you, you are, and that's good. I think it can go in another direction that you're not really thinking outside of the box with. And that's really what has now been, how long have we been like really tirelessly going full time at this? Has it been, it hasn't been a year. Um, I think it was uh, June of 2020. Okay. Is when I graduated and came back. Yeah. So, I mean, less than a year, but in that, in that time, we've made incredible strides with the marketing and the content creation opening up new platforms, um, TikTok in particular, became a massive platform for us. That's that's now today, that's kind of our launch pad. The TikTok platform, we've got like 210,000 followers. We have a community that follows the content that we make and that allows us very unique opportunities in the industry as far as um, buying and selling of equipment. We do uh, product reviews, we do comparison videos when people wanna know, hey, you know, I have a garage gym, I have a $20,000 budget, I have 600 square feet, what should I buy? You know, those are the kinds of things that now we're able to really answer. And furthermore, we're able to answer that from a place of authority because these companies um, have taken a vested interest with us and have sent us their products and have sent us like affiliate codes and they want to get, you know, they want their product in those gyms. So they work with us and we work with them. And again, the community kind of just keeps building. Um, from the educational side of things, that's kind of been where I have dedicated my focus. And it's, it, you know, it's, it's true what they say. You can, you can never wear all the hats and just you can't build if that's what you're doing. And that's for a very long time what I, what I was doing. I, I wore every hat. I was trying to do my own marketing, trying to educate myself, trying to grow the business. And now it's great because we have, we have us and then we have a third, a third person, uh, our, kind of our offset nutritionist who owns Octane Fit Garage that does our meal plans. Then we have our photographer and you'll meet her. She'll be here a little bit later. And then we have um, yeah, the podcast editor. So I guess, you know, us and then a couple 1099 you know offset people and very soon we're hoping to expand even further we're gonna go uh hopefully we're gonna <clears throat> excuse me we're gonna start doing swim lessons water aerobics all kinds of stuff we're gonna put an endless pool back there so we're gonna hopefully bring in a coach you know add one more person to the team but uh from the educational standpoint that's really where i base my focus i'm completing a master's program here in the next two months, something like that. January, I think is the graduation. And then after that, I'm uh, like I mentioned outside, I'm, I'm going to go for a PhD. I'm going to do uh, something, something uh, surrounding the thesis of contrast therapy and strength training in close proximity to one another and the effect that has on, on our, our bodies. But uh, that's, that's for the future. I feel like I've been talking for a long time, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's today. We, have a very, very different business model than we did uh, even a year ago. I'd say eight years ago, but even a year ago, it's been that big of a shift. And, and it's been really, really, it's been really helpful, I think, for, I know for a lot of people, given the, again, the COVID environment has mm -hmm. shut down gyms and people have had to look inward. A lot of people are trying to scramble and trying to do this now. And the problem with building a garage, that's a big question we get is, did you guys do this? because of COVID. And I always tell people, you know, no, we've, done, we've built this for eight years. Mm -hmm. You know, all this stuff. Now, the pricing on gym equipment is, is astronomically higher than it was when we first started building. This was not, this is probably 10x what it was when I first started building this eight years ago, what it's worth wow. today. So it's, it's pretty crazy how that, how difficult that is now. If you are somebody who is trying to, you know, if you're a trainer, you want to look inward, you want to build something like this. You want to train out of your own home. That's hard to do. Very, very expensive. Absolutely. I remember when COVID hit and I was even looking just for some, you know, hand weights to have in my house and couldn't find anything. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Used dumbbells were going for like like $100, $200 a, a dumbbell. Like yeah. people were, yeah, crazy. The market just totally imploded when, when COVID hit. And now, now it's balancing a little bit. 
but there's also the um, the manufacturing issues that the equipment companies will have. Um, they have to look at they because a lot of these people got their stuff from overseas. Some of the bigger companies like Rogue, they they were always American made, but um, some companies weren't. And so now there's there's having to be that shift, and they're having to actually find ways to you know, manufacture and make themselves here in in the U.S. So I'm, I know there's a lot of companies that struggle. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell me about your gym. This is not the average garage gym. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that, obviously that makes sense because you are a trainer and this is your business. But tell me a little bit about your gym and, and kind of the evolution of it, the types of equipment that you have, the yeah. types of training that you offer. Okay. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, our equipment is really reflective of the methodology that I use when I am creating a program for somebody. And the way I like to describe it is... I like to take aspects of training from all different types or styles of training. And I'll give you an example. You know, if somebody is a, we just use CrossFit because it's really, really easy to pick on CrossFit. Say someone's a CrossFit athlete and you know, that's what they do. They live, they eat, breathe, walk around. They are CrossFit. That's their thing. You are limiting yourself to one style of training that has good things to it and bad things to it. And by doing so, you are really opening yourself up to the possibility of injury, fatigue, DOMS, all of that comes with, and again, I'm using CrossFit because it's the low-hanging fruit, all of that comes with doing one style of training without any adherence to the others that are out there. And I think our training methodology, it's its functional in nature, but we, I, I use powerlifting exercises with 120 pound women. I use flexibility and mobility drills with 250 pound men. The, the, the way that we train here is very, very inclusive of all the different aspects of training that are out there. And if you take the time to really invest and educate yourself on each one of those, you'll learn that all of them have incredible benefits for everybody. And we're all the same. You know, human beings are, well, everybody has their own, you know, prerequisite injuries and you know past problems with their bodies and everybody's genetically different we all move in the same ways so strength training is the same for us as it is for the world's strongest man you know i can you know dull down an exercise like a farmer's walk and give it to 125 pound female the same way i could give to brian shaw in the olympics it's and that's that's the way that we implement here and that's why having all of these different types of equipment is very very beneficial you know a, a carpenter is only as good as his tools and here we have the best tools in the world and that and that's i say that with without even a hesitation not even close we have the best equipment that money can make here in this gym and that is in large part because of the second phase that we created with the company you know, a lot of the stuff I get the biggest question, the biggest question we get is how much did all that cost? Like that's what everybody asks. But in truth, a lot of this, we didn't buy. A lot of this was sent to us. These mm -hmm. companies, they say, okay, Hey, all right. You know, we see what you're doing. We have so-and-so we have this, uh, we want to send it to you. You use it in your content. You do an unboxing, you do a this or that, you do a product review and in exchange, we'll send you the product. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this amazing, amazing stuff was just kind of gifted to us. And that's awesome because it, it serves, it helps the companies, they get their name out there. It helps us because we obviously get recognition as a brand and it helps our clients because they get to come in here and use this stuff. The people who train here have access to world-class equipment and training. There's a, there's a lot of, you know, back-end stuff behind all this fancy schmancy stuff that never gets seen. And that's program development, periodization, education, all that happens in the background. And that's, that's as extensive and as impressive as what you actually see. But that part you wouldn't really experience until you actually came here and trained. Okay. Are you sponsored by any equipment manufacturer? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Behind you, you'll see some of, some of them. We've got the, the newest one is uh, the Eccentric Flyway. We haven't put them up yet. But yeah. Yeah, we have uh, I don't know, five, six sponsors, something like that. Okay. Because just looking around, everything kind of has a very cohesive look with the yellow and so I wasn't sure if that was <laughs> <laughs> all part of the, the plan. That, in all honesty, it's such a it's such an arbitrary reason. It, people always think I have this like crazy reason why. I got a wholesale price on flooring when I, the very first thing I ever bought was flooring. And that was way, that was eight years ago, eight, nine years ago. And they had blue and yellow speckles. And I was like, well, 
all right, I guess we're doing blue and yellow. And it just never stopped. And that's my big giant genius decision. That's it. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what you offer here, because I see you have, you know, you have the cardio. You said talked about the strength training. Mm-hmm. You know, looking around out back, you had some of the equipment like the ropes, and and you have your oh yeah, your hot and your cold plunge and, uh-huh. and the sauna. Tell me a little bit about what you offer. Yeah. So when you're training here, we are a strength and conditioning facility. So that can encompass a lot of different movement patterns. Uh, for conditioning, you can get plyometrics involved. You can do hit. You can do uh, long distance running. You can do marathon prep. There is a lot of different ways that you can do conditioning here. And as you mentioned, we've got inertia waves and battle ropes. And I've got stuff like some weird cardio stuff like the hit axle or, or, or the assault air runner. There's, there's a lot of different ways. And, and really, once we get once we do have that endless pool, we will have the ability to train um, um, ultra marathon runners and um, um, people who are doing like multi um, event races, people that are involved in cycling, running, swimming, all of that can happen here. We've, we've had the bike, the rower and the runner for a very long time. So that's always been kind of the go-to three options that I've usually done for that kind of endurance training. But now with, with the pool, it'll be even more so, but, um, most of our training is based around a strength and conditioning modality. If it is something to where somebody wants a strictly endurance based training program, then they'll probably end up doing a lot more hit than someone else. High intensity interval training, they'll, they'll end up having a, you know, four five, six circuit set up where they'll go, you know, exercise, 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 and just kind of go in a row without stopping. And that's more the endurance side. But there's also the, uh, the accessory work, the maintenance that has to happen as far as muscle building and bodybuilding and bodybuilding. There's another, another term that has a weird rep to it. People think bodybuilding in their head. They think, you know, a giant dude who's in like, mm-hmm. you know, okay, but that's, that's a professional bodybuilder, but bodybuilding is a vital part of strength training as from a human standpoint. And that's a big part of our training as well. A lot of our people who come here three, four times per week, three of those workouts will be centralized around bodybuilding training. They'll be doing things that are targeting two, maybe three muscle groups per workout, you know, no more. And they will be training in a way that involves, you know, a superset and then rest and then a superset and then rest. And that's a very classic bodybuilding style of training. We're just designed to, you know, increase our muscle through hypertrophy training. So, uh, I think, I think that answered someone, <laughs> someone answered the question. Yeah. You, you know, talking about that, it was interesting cause I, it was just the other day I heard on the radio, they were talking about gyms and, and training and they mentioned, you know, most people think of when, especially when you're building your home gym, you get your treadmill or you get your stair climber, your, you know, your cardio. Mm-hmm. And they said that if you really want to lose weight, cardio is not the way to go. It's the strength training. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're absolutely right. It's, there's a very, there's a very important balance that has to exist in order to achieve your best results. And that comes in the form of both strength and conditioning happening every week consistently and that's one thing i try to make sure that we get especially on something like a lower body day i will make sure that the client ends with something even if it's just a really quick hit workout you can do a hit workout in two minutes in two minutes if we were to just put you on the assault runner or on the bike i i could i could you know, crush somebody, just getting them to go all out for two minutes. That'll do it. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. And I can put that at the end of a bodybuilding style, lower body workout. And that's just one way that you can do that. There's so many, there's every single piece of equipment has a thousand different methods and a thousand different ways you can use it. And if you have all this, well, now you have, you know, a thousand different ways with a thousand different pieces. So it it gets better and it actually gets easier as a trainer. My life now is easier than it's ever been because the options in here are pretty endless. I I, I don't, I don't really need to, um, you know, think over, I don't need to overthink program periodization. I can just create it. It's all here. And I've done it enough to where I know the goals behind each person, what they want. So it's, it's easy for me to kind of play around with what I have in here and just make something. And, and a lot of, uh, a lot of the stuff in here is really unconventional. And that's one thing that I also really make sure that I try to do is I, I like to educate my people. I like to show them stuff they haven't seen before. 
you, you take um, a company like Onnit who makes a they, their their methodology is based around a primal. Um, ancient method of strength training. They use the maces and the clubs. See them over in the corner? They use a very, like I said, it's old, it's ancient. It, it, it dates back to ancient Persia when they started doing this for the, for the warrior training. That is something I like to do with some of my clients just to give them something something different, something very unique and fun. And that's the other thing is you want to, as a trainer, you want to keep it fun. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, you know, we, we do that in here a little bit too. Yeah. Well, even just, you know, for the average person, you want to keep it, you know, have some variety and keep it interesting because mm -hmm. going to the gym and just running on the treadmill for an hour every day gets... Oh, isn't it daunting? <laughs> and when I, that's the thing too. When I go into gyms, like if I go into LA Fitness or I go into Lifetime, I, go, I just don't feel motivated when I get in there. It's, it's so, it's like Walmart. It's like Walmart with machines. Like that's what I feel like when I get in there. It's just everything is, the colors are so, you know, one dimensional. Everything is all the, all the machine, nothing's fun. Nothing. It doesn't seem like I'm there to really have an awesome time. And I, I, I think that's why I, I've taken such great strides in addition to the fact that I, I love being artistic and creating and making this fun. And I love, I'm a comic book nerd, so making all the, the theme in here came naturally. But another side of that is I wanted this to be kind of a, like a, like what does a kid feel like when he goes to Disneyland? Well, okay, well, let's take that feeling and let's try to transplant that here a little bit. Let's try to make it a little bit fun. So you come in here and you're like, okay, well, I mean, I know I'm about to, you know, get my butt kicked, but I can at least look at Thor's axe and kind of feel <laughs> happy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when we spoke on the phone the other day, you had mentioned that you do some consulting with helping other people build home gyms. And mm -hmm. so, you know, there's so many fancy high tech items out there nowadays that people can purchase. You got your Pelotons, you got your mirrors, all oh, these, yeah. all these fancy things, which are great, but not necessarily necessary. Sure. What are three essential pieces of equipment that you would suggest to somebody mm. who is interested in developing a functional home gym? That's a good question. That's a, that's a big question. We get that sort of, we get that sort of question quite often. Um, first I'll talk about sort of what you, what you addressed for me, when I look at the market and I look at equipment, most of the at home fitness equipment is not going to give you the best bang for your buck. I'm referring to Peloton. I'm referring to tonal. I'm referring to the, the market has expanded toward at home gym products because of COVID. There is a, now you got LeBron James acting as if he looks that way because he works out on his tonal every day. That's it's a fallacy. It's not true. The, that stuff is typically going to it's going to bore you out. You're going to be bored with it relatively quickly. Now here, here is what I'll say for somebody who wants to actually create a home gym, understand the investment you're getting into. And if you do start this, most likely three pieces of equipment is not going to do it for you. You're probably going to end up going back to your gym, your normal gym, just because of the limitations you're going to have. Even if you do get, and if I were to answer your question straightforward, I would say you need to get a power rack. Uh, a power rack will allow you to have that's what's behind us that's this okay. this is of course taken to a bit of an extreme this is a lot of a power rack but you can get a a simple like a monster light I, if i recommend a, a power rack and this is me going out of my way because they're not one of our sponsors mm -hmm. but a rogue monster or a rogue monster light that's a very very good option that's what i would recommend it's going to afford you the opportunity to do all these attachments that'll go on here and it takes one piece of equipment and makes it larger Okay. Um, one thing I will say, I would not get cardio equipment. Really? I would not. If I'm recommending somebody to get something for their garage gym, you can go run outside <laughs> for free right now. You don't, you should not be spending that, that assault air runner is like $4,000. Well, that right there, there's your three pieces of equipment. $4,000 should absolutely get you to where you need to be for all three. Like you should not be spending that on just a treadmill. You can go run outside. Um, if I was to recommend one piece for cardio, which I feel like I should, uh, battle ropes would be a very good option. Uh, battle mm -hmm. ropes or the, or the inertia wave. There's a lot of small, almost miscellaneous pieces of equipment that people probably don't know about that will make a difference in their training that won't break the bank. There are a lot of very unique and uh, almost 
up and coming new companies that maybe they don't sell a giant power rack like Rogue, but they make this little piece. And this little piece does two things, but it does it better than anything else. And that's an example. The inertia wave is a really good one. Uh, what is the inertia wave? I'm not familiar with that. The, the inertia wave is a, it's, it's an, ela- it, picture it like an elastic battle rope. So instead of, because a battle rope is just a big giant uh, rope that weighs a certain amount and you move it in order to achieve hit training. Now, an inertia wave is different in that when I create the energy in a battle rope, the energy goes to the end of the rope and it dies. And I have to keep creating it over and over again. The inertia wave actually has, an, it has its own energy that it responds back to me with. So because it's elastic and it's this very, very dense, dense elastic, I will do the same movement patterns. So I can do the waves alternating. I can do the, the, the cyclone for the core. I can do all kinds of stuff. But it answers with its own energy coming back toward me. So that's what makes that cool. A little tangent there, but I would say stay away from cardio equipment. Get yourself a power rack. With that, you're going to need to get yourself, I would do some dumbbells. A power rack, dumbbells, and then probably a functional trainer. Probably a multi-use like you see behind me, the the dual cable. Probably a dual cable machine. I would say a power rack, dumbbells, and dual cable. Those are the three pieces of equipment that I would recommend. Okay. Which is that's a healthy that's a that's a if you have an okay budget to spend and 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 part of what we do um like i mentioned to you on the phone before this is we we actually do do gym creation for people when they want to you know do something like this they tell us their budget and then we go out and we sort of scan and a lot of this stuff like i said we get uh we get affiliate codes we get discounts from these companies who work directly with us and those are the companies that we rep to our to our people because those are the ones we that we like okay and and yeah there's a lot of stuff uh, flywheel technology that's the that's the one i think ties probably with the functional trainer honestly if a, f- a flywheel company like eccentric um that can make something that will attach to your rack of fly- flywheel technology is sort of up and coming that's a perfect example of what i was talking about a company that not a lot of people know about but that provides something new and exciting to the market and it's so multifunctional okay yeah now we had talked a little bit about you know the look of your gym and you mentioned a lot of the marvel um imagery that you have mm-hmm. how important is the look of the space that you're going to be working out in mm. how how important is it as should should you you know because a lot of people they'll just especially for with garage gyms mm-hmm. the, or they'll put them in you know their spare room and they don't really care they just throw the equipment in there sure. maybe they'll put a tv on the wall and that's it yeah you know should you care about how it looks should you try to make it a, a fun place to go to oh i certainly think so absolutely but, uh, as i mentioned you know I, I took great strides to make sure that this place felt fun and for me it's it's so much more than just a gym it allows me to express both this is this is an, uh, sort of an art form for me it's not just a lot of the stuff the guys you see on the walls I, I painted those I've, I've been a painter and an artist since I was a little kid uh, our kettlebells I painted a lot of this stuff is is the creation aspect uh, either with you know digital or paint that I've done over years and so for me this was more than a, this was more than just a business this was a way for me to really just kind of express myself and i think that's a big part of what if you are <clears throat> i'll say this if you are a trainer if you are creating this space just for you and you want to just have a place to work out then you could probably get away with like you said you know putting the machines in doing a tv not taking any pains to making it look this way but if you are actually a trainer and you're trying to <clears throat> excuse me man and you're trying to commercialize yourself and you're trying to get people in Oh, absolutely. Your brand is enormous. Mm-hmm. And how you look, especially now, today. Here, here's kind of a question for you. How big of an impact would you say the environment in here has had on social media? Oh, 100%. So, I mean, wh- one thing that I would add is it's all very subjective to the individual. Some people don't like the color aspect. Obviously, mm-hmm. that is a huge part of uh, our brand mm-hmm. because anyone who sees this, they're like, what is that? They don't. There's so many things going on that it just draws people in to want to know more. And I completely agree with what he was saying. If you're trying to get people in, it's very critical to have a space that is very visually appealing because people want to train here with him. Um, But if someone's building a home gym, would you agree that it's 
obviously it's completely up to them some people like the very simple just kind of like the hard look maybe just like american flag and that's all they need mm -hmm. do you agree with that yeah or? like <clears throat> like take mom and dad's uh home gym for example there's a perfect example of just something that's very cookie cutter very designer they have uh you know taupe wallpaper they have mirrors on the walls they have tvs above them they have fans on the ceiling and they have a line of uh, torque machines and that's it that's it that's their entire gym for them that's exactly what they wanted it's exactly what they needed though to be fair they don't train there anymore they train here so maybe it wasn't <laughs> but for a gym owner who isn't a trainer you're only limited by your own imagination you you, you can do whatever you want or as little as you want and it probably won't impact anyone because no one's going to see it but you it's kind of just your thing but if you are trying to break into this from a professional standpoint and you're actually trying to get other people interested in what you're doing, what he said is 100% right. When you look at take TikTok, if you look at a homepage where a soundbite has been used and we're involved in that and you, we're in the mesh with all the other sound bites that are on the page and people who see that will scroll through and they'll just this is what people do on TikTok they just browse because TikTok is hilarious that's what it's just entertainment I don't know if you've ever just gone on there but people are funny and I love that about the platform it's not like Facebook where everybody's just venting about their problems or, or Instagram where it's just like like just it's actually there's a lot of creativity behind TikTok. It allows the user to be expressive and to actually create things, and TikTok rewards that. But to my earlier point, when we get involved, and by that I mean a, a, a gym video that we've made using that, and we end up on a page with 70, 80 other people, as you scroll, oh, you see when we're there. Yeah. Because everybody has, it's funny, everybody on TikTok, the background is sort of the same. It's grays, it's whites, it's maybe an outdoors, but it's usually people in their house doing it. So it's always, every, I, that's another thing you notice is like everybody lives in the same like t type of house. They're all whites and grays and browns. It's all the same. And then when you see this, you're like, what is that? Because <laughs> it just, it just pops. Yeah, that's how I felt when I saw the images and, and when they were sent to me and I was kind of like, whoa, what is that? <laughs> yeah. like, I don't think I need coffee now or ever again. <laughs> But that's, that's not, I would not say, in fact, I will 100% say that is not the reason mm -hmm. behind all of this. I, I wanted a very almost flamboyant environment because mm -hmm. garages are dungeony. Every gym and every, I don't know what it is about black and red, like every gym out there that wants to be really like, you know, we want to be hardcore. We want to have the hardcore. They're very dark. They're very, they're very cavey, and especially when you're in an environment that's kind of small, that's inherently going to be the case. I wanted to reverse that. I wanted to make sure that this like had some life to it, not just when you're in it, but when you saw it, and that's how it got started. It really had nothing to do with getting eyes on it through social media. Right, and that's kind of what I was saying is, you know, if you're, especially if you're building a garage gym, you know, the garages are pretty dreary, pretty bland. You know, you don't want to... It, it doesn't give you any motivation to go out and be working out and staring at your water heater. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. And uh, it, that's why that's funny. <laughs> did you see our water heater? It's, <laughs> it's wrapped like a car. I did We did a car wrap and it's all comic books oh, nice. wrapped around the, t <laughs> it's funny. You mentioned the water heater. <laughs> Someone recently was like, what's on your water heater? Somebody like on, on Instagram did it. Did you like, did, did you car wrap your water heater? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, all right. Well, I guess I shouldn't really be all that surprised. How important are mirrors? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, mirrors are actually pretty darn important. Um, a lot of the form techniques that I implement for my people, it's very important that they see themselves in the mirror um, so that they understand what I'm trying to change on them. And I'll tell them, you know, look in the mirror, look in the mirror, look what I'm seeing. Let me explain to you what I'm doing. It's also, and I've noticed this, this is something that a lot of people may not know, it's also a, a confidence thing. And that can go one of two ways. When somebody is training, and I get, I get this a lot, when somebody is training and they're not confident, and they're not happy with how they look, and they're not comfortable even looking at how they look, 
they have an issue looking in the mirror. Mm -hmm. They have a real problem. I'll put them in front of the mirror and I'll, and I'll explain the exercise and they will look down or they'll look up or they'll look over. I'm like, look in the mirror. Like, no, I don't want to look in the mirror. I'm like, you need to get comfortable looking in the mirror. You, 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 the, the first step to you know, fixing a problem is, is acknowledging that there is one. You need to look in the mirror. And, and that's, that's, that's funny you, you mentioned that because there's, there's that. And then, like I said, there's also the, the technique aspect to where when somebody is doing something wrong, they can't really see what I see unless they look in the mirror and I'll turn them and be like, okay, now look in the mirror. Now, so now that gives the opportunity to do that. And yeah, we've got, I think we've got a decent amount of mirrors in here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because a lot of people I know who have home gyms have the mirrors mainly when they're done working out, they go over and they pose and they take their selfie. And, <laughs> oh, absolutely. <yeah. laughs> Some of that but, goes on in here too. But to sit there and, and personally, I'm one of those people. I don't really want to watch myself working out. You know? <laughs> mm, yeah. 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 There's, I know there, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot of different opinions on, on that, on watching yourself work out. And some people don't like it. I know I, so a lot of people don't like working, watching themselves work out because they, they, they think it's maybe it's, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but they feel that it's a poor reflection on their current state of affairs. Even if it's just by themselves, like I don't like looking in the mirror and I just, I try to instill a sense of confidence in that. Okay. Yeah. But you know, nobody sees you not looking in the mirror except you. And I'm the only other person in here and I see you regardless of whatever you see. So mm -hmm. take that step, start getting comfortable, just acknowledging that you want to change. So okay. yeah. What are some tips that you might have for creating a home workout routine? That's a good question too. Um, tips for creating a home workout routine. Well, I would, to reiterate, I would first ask what kinds of equipment they have access to uh, and then create from there. It, it depends on, yeah, what they have is really going to drive that. Because if someone has nothing, honestly, I would recommend going to a gym, go to a gym. You need to go to a gym. Like I can write you a, this falls into the same category as the tonal and the Peloton and the at home fitness things. I can write you a body weight style at home workout, but you're going to get bored of that workout. You're not going to like that program. Eventually you're going to want something different. So you need to have an environment where you can get that. Do you recommend going to a gym before you decide to build your home gym? and kind of test out yes. the equipment and see what yes. you like and what you're attracted to? I, I would actually recommend getting with a trainer before I invested in a home gym. Yeah. Honestly, honestly, investing in a home gym should be something you kind of do last because it's such a big investment mm -hmm. and it just sucks to see when people drop 10, 20 G's and then they don't have the they don't have the knowledge on what to do with that and, and again this has become such a popular thing for people to do now they, they just do it and there's got to be ed education behind it and then you know god forbid you get hurt that's the other thing is when people train alone and they don't have any background in this they don't really know they just have the the, the equipment you can get hurt very easily training on your own. If you don't know how to properly do this, you don't have an understanding of biomechanics, all that kind of stuff can really, really impact you. So I would, um, I would honestly, if you get an at, an at home gym, if, if money was no issue, an at home gym and a trainer that will train you, that's kind of where I would go. That's what I would advise doing. Cause so many people will, they'll rush out and they'll get the latest, they'll get the Peloton. Mm -hmm. They'll, you know, but then they get it home and they go, Oh gosh, I, I really hate doing this every day. You know, I'd rather be working out with the kettlebells or something. Or going to a class. That's, an yeah. that's another thing with, t again, t Peloton. Peloton is a great piece of equipment and it works well. It's an at-home fitness and their big thing is that, you know, this is what you need. That's it. This is the, your Peloton. You can now, you can look like the, the incredible model that you see in our video by doing the Peloton. Cardio is not going to get you there. That's mm -hmm. cardio. That's it, it may be hit, it may be hard, but that's just one aspect like we were talking about earlier. That's one small avenue of your fitness journey that you can maybe achieve with your Peloton. There's so much more. And you're in order to get that the rest of that stuff and because it, you're you're not going to see what you want. People are going to get it. They're going to drop How much is the Peloton? People are like a few grand, I know. A few that. grand, right? They're Two, 3000 yeah. dollars You're going to drop that money. It's going to get here. You're going to use it for a month. 
and then, you know, maybe nothing, maybe nothing will happen. Maybe something will happen, but I guarantee you, you're either going to get bored or you're going to want something else in addition to it. It's fine to have, but you also need to have a gym membership or a trainer or an access to, you know, anaerobic training style of weights or resistance bands or training in that way as well. So it's not, it's not enough. Almost always, really and truly, unless you are, I would say the average person that we interact with when we create gyms is about $25,000. So if someone really wants to have the gym at their house, that's a, that's a decent, that's a decent investment. It's going to be a real thing to get in in a, in a decent home gym will have probably about half a dozen pieces of equipment in it in order to really get what you want. Cause that's, that's gotta be the goal for a home gym owner is I don't, I don't ever want to go to the gym again. I want to be able to do this here. I want to be able to get my workouts done on my own here. Okay. With this sale going on, it's around the lowest models around 2,300. Some some show 1,500, but that that including nothing. Is that shipping? Is it? I did not place an order. So I'll look at it now. (laughs) That's the other thing is uh, with, and that doesn't include the programming either. That's right, because Peloton is, and that's like, I think like 65, 75 a month, something like that, to do that membership. That's, yeah, Peloton's got a a good business model. (laughs) Nothing against them. They're they're doing very well. Let me see if there's free shipping. Sorry, keep going. I'm talking to myself, which I probably shouldn't do on a podcast style. (laughs) (laughs) One thing that is often talked about when, when I've, talked with other people who are trainers or who who just go to the gym regularly is setting attainable goals you know Mm. most people especially come the new year they want to go all out and they want to i'm going to work out you know six seven days a week and two hours a day and you know i'm going to lose 40 pounds in the first two months and it's a little unrealistic and after a couple weeks they're burnt out and they just give up (laughs) My favorite meme out there, there's so many gym memes, is that one of Robert Downey Jr. from Ironman rolling his eyes and the caption <laughs> reads, time for the new year, new me trend. And it's it's so funny because as, as trainers, it's so true. Everything is so cyclical. And right now, oh my goodness, marketing is ramping. Everybody wants to, they're, they're hitting us up for training to this and that. And, and it's fine. It's good. It's great. And, and I'm happy that people view the new year that way, but there's nothing magical or mystical about a January 1st. And there's not the problem with that mindset. And the problem with people that fall into that is that they fail to understand this is a journey in chapters of months and years, not days and weeks to get when we see the body we want, when we see whoever it is, if we see Chris Hemsworth and you're like, okay, that's how I want to look. Well, someone like that trains every day, for years, most likely has a background in athletics of some kind. They have a genetic component and all of that plays into how they appear on screen as Thor. When we see that, and maybe that's a, maybe that's not everyone's goal. Maybe somebody wants an attainable goal. And to your earlier question, it's important to distinguish between, you know, that as my goal and a realistic goal. And, and, and I would say being realistic on how I'm going to get there. Because I don't, I don't really like to say, you know, that's an unrealistic goal. You will, you'll never look like Thor. I, I would never, I, I wouldn't say that to any of my clients. It'd be like, be like, yeah, how, how long are you willing to, how long are you willing to hang out with me? Because you know, all that stuff is, he's a human being just like the rest of us, and you may never be, you know, six six and look like that, but you can absolutely transform yourself. I would say, be realistic about your timeline rather than don't set unrealistic goals. The timeline is almost always the thing that people underestimate. It takes a lot of it takes a lot of time. People overestimate what they can do in a month or two, and they underestimate what they can do in like ten years. That's that's no no exception to to training. That that's true in this business, like it is in most other businesses. If somebody wants to create a business, they want to have it now. They, they read somewhere that Tony Robbins said this takes 10,000 hours. Well, I'm at 10,001. Why isn't it here now? Well, that is not always how it happens. And it takes a lot of time to build. Your body's no different. So my, you know, the best results I always have from clients are clients who will stick it out for, you know, six months, nine months, a year. You'll transform your whole lifestyle in that amount of time. And a year may seem, you know, 
unfathomable at the beginning. Like, there's no way I could hang out with this guy for a year and just do all this stuff that I see him doing on an Instagram and everything. There's no way I could do that for a year. You can if you take it, you know, day by day, week by week. You know, we just focus on the the exact rep that we're in right now. Don't think about it. And that's another thing I get. What do we have next? What do we do next? What's after this? What do we do? I always, I'm like, I'm like, just focus on what you're doing. Don't worry about that. We'll, we'll get it done. It's the same thing as the scale gets larger and larger. Set a realistic expectation for January. Set a realistic expectation for two years from January. Just understand where it is you're at and I, I, I always ask, you know, how long have you not been where you wanted to be? <laughs> oh, I've never been where I wanted to be. How old are you? I'm 32. Okay. In another 32 years training the way you're supposed to, then you'll probably be where you want to be. Uh, you, you, people, you know, they live their whole life living a certain way, eating a certain way, not doing certain things. And then come January 1st, okay, this is the new year, new me. And let's say you took that mentality and you took it all the way until January 1 of 2023. So for one year, you never left that new year, new me mentality. Then you would probably get to your goal. Okay. How often do you recommend people work out and for how long? That all depends on the person. Okay. All depends on the person. Very, very tough to kind of just you know, broad brush over everyone and answer that. People have, like I said, injuries, people have pre existing conditions, people have jobs. They can't you know, some people can simply cannot afford to spend that much time every single day and do this. I would of course recommend someone do something. And when I say I train seven days a week, that freaks people out sometimes. They don't understand like like, oh well, he's overtraining. That's your definition of training probably doesn't have the same understanding of it as what we what I do. Mm -hmm. it, 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 that does not mean I'm doing deadlifts every single day or training, you know, hard, hard upper body bench every single no. Training just means I'm doing something active. It, after we're done with this, I'm gonna I'm going to Sherpa my brother's hiking gear up the top of Flatiron so he can go spend the night up there with uh, with his brother-in-law. And, and that's that's my workout for today. Well, that's not, you know, that's not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but that's not a that's not a powerlifting day. So that to me, that that's my workout for the day. But I do something every single day. I, I want to move. I, I want to exert myself. I want to break a sweat every day. Okay. What can people do to better their odds of success? You know, we talked hire, about a hire a trainer, <laughs> hire a trainer. It, it, it sounds like a sales pitch, but it's exactly the same thing as if you are trying to change the course of your business or you're trying to expand in some way. What do you do? You find somebody who's already done it. That's what, look at us. We're, you know, I'm, we're investing. We're getting an endless pool back there. I don't know anything about training Olympic style swimmers. I was never a swimmer. So what do I do? I go to the, I go to the market. I'm like, Hey, where, where are the local Arizona swim coaches? Where, where are the people who actually know how to do this? What's your, show me your resume. Show me what you've done. I want to learn from you. You come here. I'll do this. We'll expand. And that's how. It's the exact same thing with your body. You don't know. You don't. And that's, that's so much more important than even, even like some of the most dire business decisions when it comes to your body. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you can seriously hurt yourself. And if you hurt yourself... Man, your back is most of you. People don't realize that. Your back, if you hurt your back, oh my goodness, you're not going to be able to do anything. You're not going to be able to go to work. You're not going to be able to do, oh, getting injured sucks. And if you can get with a good trainer, somebody who can even just, even if all their job was is minimize my risk of injury, that's worth paying for a trainer if you're going to be doing this consistently. It's so worth it. Okay. So, yeah. And there are trainers that will come to your house. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. There are, there are, there are mobile, especially now there are so many mobile trainers. I, I will say this, <laughs> n not to disparage my own industry. There are, there are no prerequisites. I was for, just going to ask that. How do you know who, who, who'd have come to your house and help perhaps you? Perhaps <laughs> the most important question you've asked so far, <laughs> how to determine if a trainer is worth training me. This is one of the most unique industries in that anybody from any background can have no education or past experience and just say they're a trainer. Anybody can. You go into LA Fitness right now, you will meet 22 guys under the age of 30 who all claim to have reinvented the wheel. They 
all their trainers and they're so good. And that is not true. <laughs> this is just like hiring a good trainer can mitigate your chances of getting hurt. Hiring a trainer who does not have an understanding of what they are doing and who you are and you know just d doesn't know is the is one of the quickest ways to get hurt because a trainer by design and especially a novice trainer in their head they think okay my job is to push this person that's my job i'm a trainer i am here to make sure because they're lazy this person has all these oh they're lazy they haven't done things right and it's my job to make sure they get that 10th rep and get to that point i have to do this i have to push them otherwise i'm a bad trainer they're never going to transform unless i force them to do this that's a that's an inexperienced trainer's mentality toward doing that. And that's 90% of the market, probably more. <laughs> Again, the higher you rise, and once you have a good trainer, you understand the difference between somebody who is and who is not. It, 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 again, I hate disparaging my own industry, but this is one of the only places where you can get people with no credibility who can make a decent amount of money. Trainers, especially right now with, with online training and, and, and the, the mobilization thing of COVID, people, anybody can just do this and people can get a, they, they can get a education on YouTube. I'm not going to say it's a good education, but anybody can just watch YouTube videos. They can watch our page. Somebody could be, somebody could become a trainer just from following us. Sincerely, somebody could watch our page for six months be like, okay, um, I'm just going to download all this into a, a, a zip form and I'm going to watch this a few times and then I'm going to go to my neighbor's house and I'm going to tell him, hey man, I, I, know what, I know what I'm doing. I can do this for you. If I had to give one tidbit of information to someone who is pricing out a trainer, who is looking at a trainer, look for a trainer who has their own facility. A trainer with his or her own facility that, that has their name on it is a career trainer. That's somebody who has taken, because then you know, okay, not only has this person taken a personal interest in the success of his people, this person has taken a financial risk. This person has staked their future. This person has a real vested interest in the success of me. And, and, and this person's reputation is on the line as well as anything else. And that's something that I, because this is all, you know, the expression of myself and of the education that I have, you know, accrued and of, you know, what we have created. It's important to me. And that's why I'm so selective, especially now with who I train. And that's, that's a really cool thing. You know, we've gotten to the point where, you know, I can say, you know what? I don't think we're a really good match. And that freaks people out. Like, wait a minute, you're not, I want to, I think I want to do this. I'm like, yeah, but here's my reservation. You know, that's, and that's weird to people because people have this idea, of course, justifiably that most trainers, <clears throat> most trainers got to eat. Most trainers are starving. Most are like, I'll train anybody. I'll train your pet. If you want me to, <laughs> if you pay me, I'll do it. Like well, and, my dog's kind of fat. So <laughs> <laughs> honestly, a pet training thing would not be the worst business model out no, there. No, it would not. It would not be, it would not be a bad thing. But you get where I'm going with that when you, because where we're at, because I have so much of my reputation and our business on the line. I want to work with people who are you know, motivated and they're excited and they love what we're doing. And maybe they follow us, maybe they don't, but they, they have an understanding of how we train all of those things. And they're comfortable training with us. They're comfortable training with us because they've, they've seen what we do and they've seen our results. They're comfortable training with us financially. You know, I, I, I want people who want to be here. That's all I ask. But you get, you know, you get a situation like maybe, okay, here's a dad. He's got his 19, 18-year-old kid and he's signing up his kid to train here because this dad's convinced that this kid is going to be the next, the next Wes Welker. He, he, this guy is going to the NFL. He's training here with you. And I'm like, hey, I always, okay, you know, hold on. Let me meet your son. Let me talk to him. Because if he ain't vibing this, if he's, you know, maybe the dad got him here because the dad thinks he's lazy and maybe he is lazy. Well, you know, I don't, I don't want to work with a lazy kid whose dad is footing the bill and yeah, okay. I'd make, I'd make money doing it, but that's not, that's not what I want. Uh, I want, I want that kid who he believes he's going to be the next, the next Wes Welker. That is a hard set. The next Wes Welker. He thinks he's going to be. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I would say. 
pick your trainer selectively and make sure that there's just one practical thing. If his name is attached to the business and he's in ownership of it, he's got a vested interest in seeing you succeed. Okay. Is, is there any certifications required? I mean, you mentioned anybody could be a trainer, but are there any certifications that people could look for? Look for, yes. Um, the CSCS is a very good one. The ISSA, that's another really good one. Uh, CSCS, NASM, and um, um, the ISSA. Those are the three that I would, I would look for. But again, that is a arbitrary metric that, that it, anybody, anybody, you, you could right now go onto that website, sign up, they'll send you the book, read the book, take the test, and you're there. That's it. It's not a, a certification is probably the lowest form of education for this. I would say the highest metric that people should, I think the big camera just cut out. Why is the power thing so weird? I would say the, the biggest metric uh, that people should look for is practical experience. Practical experience in the form of real transformations, real people, like actually seeing the results that you can really visually see, that's the first thing you should look for. A, a, a good trainer, and that's again why social media is so powerful, a good trainer should have backlogs of thousands of hours of people training and results and methods and techniques and all of the stuff that goes with it. That's what you wanna see. That's the most powerful thing. And then if you wanted to go the book route, a higher education trainer will have a master's, will have a PhD, will have something in that regard. That'll, that's just one really nice way of showing, okay, this is a guy who's really interested in the educational side and the practical side because you don't also, you don't want one without the other. There are a lot of, you know, I'm sure there are trainers out there with master's degrees who you know, they've, they've never left EOS. They've never left Lifetime Fitness. I, I, I know, I know for a fact, uh, 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 I know of a gym teacher. He's got a, a PhD in, in human movement. And I'm like, well, okay, I mean, that's fine. That's not a problem. He's a, he's a gym teacher. He teaches, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade kids how to play dodgeball. That's his thing, but he has a master. If you want a trainer, they need to have both. They've got to have the practical and the educational going simultaneously. And that's really what you should look for when you're pricing one out. Okay. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, that was all the main questions I had for you. If people are interested in, you know, coming to your gym or, you know, having you consult on helping them create an at home program, mm -hmm. how can they reach you? Where, where should they look? A good question. Uh, they can certainly follow us on any of our social medias. Uh, if you Google strict vision athletics, you'll reach us in some capacity. Okay. It would, they'll hit Instagram, they'll hit TikTok, or they'll hit our <laughs> website, or, or they'll, you know, we can, we can attach my phone number to this if we want. <laughs> but uh, email also, strictvisionathletics at gmail.com. Okay. The great thing about social media now, if you go to any one of his accounts, do you know what Linktree is? Mm -hmm. Everything that you Funnels. need is on his Linktree, so you can see everything. Yeah. You can see, you can see the apparel. You can see the the online stuff. You can see the meal plans. You can see where we're located. I, I'm surprised everybody doesn't. It's funny just because everybody like knows where I'm at. I can never whoa. Okay. <laughs> I can certainly never like rob a bank between my wrapped truck <laughs> or everybody just knowing where I live. Like it's 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 odd. I've had people just kind of show up and then people be like. I saw this on TikTok. Is this strict vision? I'm like, oh yeah, hey, what's up, man? This is like, this is your house. I'm like, yeah, it's my house. <laughs> but yeah, okay. that would be the best. Just Google us. Just Google us, and you'll find us. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for taking some time to chat with me and having yes. me on your podcast. Thank you so much for coming on, Rebecca. That was a lot of fun. That, that was, was a really fun, and uh, that was great for us, just uh, for me, because I, you know, I, it's good to be able to express all this and explain it all. Because typically, the, the roles are sort of reversed. You know, I'm doing the interview, and the other person <laughs> is telling me about their thing. So, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, we're very excited to see the publication. Great. Well, and uh, just real quick before we end, where where can people see this story? Because this is being published. This yes. is we're going to do this. Where's it going to be? It will be in the January issue of City Lifestyle Gilbert. Okay. Um, I'm not sure exactly where it is distributed. I can find that out and okay. send you the information. And Any information on like where in the, like what page, how many pages, anything like that? Any? Not right at the moment. Okay. So it'll be, you know, a few pages, at least three or four. Cool. So, nice. Awesome. That'll be awesome. Yeah. We're very excited. Great. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll call it there. Sounds good. All right. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the podcast. If you guys like our content and you want to see more of it, click the subscribe button down below. Or as always, you can follow us on any of our other social media platforms. Stay fit, you guys. Stay healthy and become the 1%.